Hello everybody and good evening. Thank you so much for joining us today. So some of you may know me. Uh, my name is Marcelo Garzon. I am the homeopath in Toronto. Uh, my previous life I uh, was uh, in, an engineer and long time ago I decided to uh, to challenge myself with homeopathy, homeopathic medicine. Um, as it started from personal reasons, from my son, he was uh, with ADD and so on. And um, I was already doing a lot of work on uh, with herbs. And I decided to take this on, um, on a serious um, life change. Um, that's what I'm doing. I'm um, certified in Toronto. Okay, so um, what I want to talk to you about heart attack. And um, if you are sitting here, um, I hope um, you're healthy and you're well. And the thing is, I don't expect people to come to me and say, I have a heart attack, give me a pill. It will, it will be wrong. I will send them to the ER and they can come after. Or they can come before and you will see when you can come and... Maybe you, you don't know that you have a heart attack, but then you can come before and you can come after you saw a doctor. And, and I will talk about this in a moment. So heart attack, they call it the silent killer because we don't know what we have in the heart or in the circulation. Sometimes we don't know. And so we also know that um, heart attack, it's the main cause of death okay, before cancer and before anything else, today in the world, this is the heart attack that we should uh, consider caring um, and, and treating and be, you know, proactive. Um, and today I want to talk to you about nutrition and homeopathy. I didn't put a slide about Ayurvedic philosophy and Ayurvedic medicine, but um, they also treat heart attack with uh, nutrition as well. So just to... Um, take off with some definitions and, and people sometimes confuse. So we have atherosclerosis and we have arteriosclerosis. The difference is one will create uh, basically plaques in the arteries and the other one it's hardening of the blood vessel. Um, both can be um, developed by maybe the same, the same symptoms, the same situations, the same triggers, but um, atherosclerosis it's hard to detect. We can go with the technology today in hospitals and they can tell you that you have it. So you can do several steps to, um, to reduce it. But um, the researchers and, and doctors say that the only way to know um, that you had um, atherosclerosis is after death when they do a biopsy. Otherwise, it's very difficult. Um, I'm not trying to scare anybody here or later when we see the video. I'm trying to just um, tell you there are things we can do. Um, so atherosclerosis starts from birth, okay? So we all have it, me as I'm speaking to you. Uh, and the older we get, um, basically the risk for heart attack increases. And the development of atherosclerosis, it's getting um, bigger and bigger. Now. We can live our life without knowing that we have atherosclerosis or how much of it we have, okay? And, but again, we can keep it in check. Now, as we said, atherosclerosis is it's a, it's a plaque in the, in the um, arteries. Now you see, if you see the yellow, um, the yellow uh, layer there, it's basically the atherosclerosis developing. Now, what is in there? It's, it's lipid. lipid I will continue using the word lipid, it's fats, okay? And there are different infl inflammatory cells. Now, inflammatory cells are going everywhere in the body where there is an injury. You can have an injury that you can see, like you, you hit yourself with a hammer, so you're going to have um, inflammation, and this inflammation, it's a healthy mechanism of the body, it's repairing and it's sending different cells to the, to the impact area to repair. Now, the lipid, it's basically a glue, and we will talk about that glue. It's the cholesterol. It's our glue, and we need that. And it's basically fixing a problem like you would fix a pipe in the house or a hole 
in the wall, so you're going to fix it with a glue. The problem is that this repairing mechanism, as good as should be, and we don't want to intervene, okay, we don't want to intervene, um, if it happens a lot, means we have more of the plaque. This yellow is going to take more of the diameter of the arteries and will prevent the blood from flowing. All right? Now, if we, if we are people with, you know, this kind of, one of these or some of these issues, we have diabetes or overweight or we are smokers or we have any diseases, in the organ diseases or many um, uh, infections or even genetics, so we, we are kind of in the higher risk to get um, atherosclerosis. I want to have a few seconds about genetic, to talk about genetic, because we know today that we can check our genes. And if we have ancestors with certain diseases, so we may find out that we have the gene and we basically may have that disease. Now, the information is valuable because it's not a, a, a life sentence. It means that I know that I may have the genes and this is good to know because I can take steps and basically not to get sick as my ancestors, right? So it's important to know our genetics. Now, side effects or the chicken of the egg, right? I mean, I can have high blood pressure because I have atherosclerosis or I can have atherosclerosis and produce high blood pressure. The issue is that when people come to me with high blood pressure, cholesterol, triglycerides and, and so on and so forth, um, I have to treat them for what they come to me and I have to basically investigate if they went to the doctor and they, do they have other issues that may eventually cause atherosclerosis or heart attack. As soon as in homeopathy we start treating these conditions of cholesterol or triglycerides in, with a combination of homeopathy and, and nutrition, we could be very successful very successful in basically delaying the development of atherosclerosis because remember you cannot stop it all the way okay or we can even prevent it all right so as we said cholesterol is a lipid it's a fat without cholesterol the the cells will die we will die with the cells we need cholesterol there is a tendency now oh i have high cholesterol and i need to do something about that Yes, we have to do maybe something about that, but I think the important thing is to understand why do we have so much cholesterol. Now, the liver is the one of the things that the liver does, because it's a factory for many things in the body, is to create cholesterol. Also, the liver will take the leftover of cholesterol and it will dispose these cholesterol that we don't need. So, when we have a sick liver, and there is a chance that we are going to have very little cholesterol and then we have different diseases or we have too much cholesterol and imagine that we cannot dispose it, right? It's a garbage, it's a garbage kind of floating in the air and we need to use what we need to use, but the rest, if we cannot dispose, it's hanging there. So it's important to understand um, the, the, we, don't, we don't try how to say this. It, it's hard to make the dots. You, people don't come to me and say, okay, let's put the, dot to, the dots together. I am going to put the dots when people talk to me and then they said, I have a liver issues or I have kidneys issues or I have depression, as you heard Karina saying about the mindset. So all these things, um, we need to, it, will, it will get together eventually. It's like connecting the dots for specific person, because we are not the same. So as we said, cholesterol, uh, it's needed and lubricates the cells. This, without the cholesterol, the cells will not get to do the functions or will not get to the places they need to do. Now, maybe you know this information, maybe you don't, but it's important to realize um, some things. Cholesterol, it's not one part cholesterol. There are many different sizes, okay, the different types of cholesterol and different sizes. 
And what I'm saying is the important things about cholesterol is the smallest the size, the smaller is the dangerous it is. Because we need, remember, we have to use, the body will use the cholesterol parts, but the, the ones that it doesn't need, we need to catch them, bring them back to the liver, the liver will do the job of disposing. Now, what happens is the more time these particles are circulating in the bloodstream, there is a good chance, and if we cannot catch them, there is a good chance they will get stuck to the arteries walls and it creates basically reducing the diameter of the artery walls. So small particles plus more time in the bloodstream that produces plaques. Now triglycerides, it's another lipid and we need it. Now triglyceride is it's a, it's a type of energy that it's stored in the cells after meals and when we basically we don't exercise we very passive all our life very passive so this energy okay it's not used for the by the body so when we don't eat and we need to go around move go to shopping go to work do things so these are the the lipids cells that the body will use to get energy to do what we need to do the thing is if the body is sick or if we have if we eat too much um, and if we are passive too much passive uh, in our life so these triglycerides basically stay in the body and if the body doesn't dispose then and, and also the connection with high cholesterol then we have heart diseases now I, I want to I'm not going to emphasize too much about what you see here because Karina already mentioned, I'm just going to say, you see, this is flashing here to say, do not worry. Uh, there is no interaction when you come to me and I give you a homeopathic remedy, and in parallel, you are taking what the doctor is giving you. It's very safe. They do not interact. Now, what we want to do, some people say, I want something more natural, and my doctor is giving me drugs, this and this. So my recommendation is you need to keep doing what the doctor says, you need to take homeopathic remedies when you start feeling a bit better i would recommend go to your doctor and says i want to fade off reduce the amount of the drug i'm taking and you are going to be in touch with me uh, to continue the homeopathic remedy and the observations because then we can switch from the drugs which are full of chemicals to homeopathic remedies which are completely safe so there is no dependency, I want to emphasize, when we feel okay, the cholesterol is down, the, the blood pressure is down, we can stop at, at any moment, we can stop taking the remedy. And as Karina already mentioned, so you keep looking, observing the, um, what, what's happening in your life, what's happening with your symptoms, and accordingly you, you react. Um, again here, you heard from, um, from Karina already, about so many things we are looking from you to tell us. We don't want, we try not to ask you questions. We want to see organically who the person is in front of us, right? What you like, what you don't, what irritates you. It's very important the life in the past, the life in the present. What do you want it to be and why you are not that person? What happens that blocks you and, and you know, it's like you're trying to move and I cannot move because I have a luggage and it's so heavy and I cannot get rid of it. And so think, th think about this, and that happens a lot to students. Before they get into exams or they have to submit work or go into an interview, so suddenly they have physical symptoms like tummy ache or they get diarrhea. So there are many, so many cases like that. What does it mean? It means that the, the mind is so intense in, in something that they have to do and they are so nervous, it affects the entire body, the physical body. So if you ate something, maybe you like that all your life and suddenly you start, you start getting diarrhea just because you know you are going to have an interview, but you are, not, you are unconscious about that. So imagine when we have things from the past or, or every day, problems every day that affecting our mind, no wonder that we have high blood pressure, 
no wonder that the digestion is not good, so we don't digest and the fat is getting not to the right place or we cannot dispose out of the fat and then we are getting overweight or we're eating too much sugar, right? Because I like chocolate. There are research that they say that the moment I'm getting from my chair to the cabinet to pick up the chocolate, I'm already happy. There are research that they, they can prove that. So imagine how good is the brain for something positive and also for something negative. That's why it's important everything to know about you. Now, this is a full, full slice. I just, I, I highlighted in different colors, different remedies. And here is why uh, homeopathy is important and how we can help. And we have many, many more remedies. So if you have traumas and you, you have high blood pressure because of trauma, it can be aconite or that could be natrium moriaticum, as, as Karina says. Now, if we have, um, if you ever went to the doctor and wanted to check your blood for calcification, right? Um, that can be um, arteriosclerosis, that it's getting very stiff. Now, for that situation, I can give you calcar. It's made out of the oyster, the, the shell, the, the white on the shell of the oyster, it's made out of that. Now, some people have breathing problem related to maybe heart or circulation. So it's like, you know, they have to catch their, their, their chest because they cannot, when, when I breathe, it's going up and down, but it's so painful, that can be bryonia. And there are many other, um, uh, for instance, when we are talking about issues connecting high blood pressure with, um, with the kidneys, Okay, that can be digitalis, a beautiful plant that we all have in Canada, this plant digitalis in the gardens. And that's very helpful for when we have high blood pressure or heart issues related to kidneys. And I will talk about kidneys um, in a moment. Now, when we different, different pulse, um, like um, the, the, it's, it's very weak or it's very irregular. Okay, we have a remedy made out of gold. Okay. Gold, it's, it's a remedy. It's also used pharmaceutically. Okay, they made gold as a remedy and it's also in homeopathic medicine. Um, and there are, there are many conditions. So what you need to take out of this is that when you come to a homeopath, it's important that you say everything. There is no good or bad. It is what it is. This is me. This is what's happening. This is concomitant, as Karina said, I have something related to something else. Okay, so that's why it's important because we can find the remedy that matches you. Now, I want to talk about nutrition because nutrition is the key, is the key. You want to avoid and you can avoid having diseases altogether and especially heart diseases. And here I have the supplements and we can talk about the supplements. I think um, every person that comes to me, I talk to them about these four magic supplements because they are natural and we need them for directly or indirectly to help our body. And we will talk, uh, we'll emphasize a bit more in a second. Now, what for sure, I'm, when I talk to uh, people that come to me or ask questions is try to remove from your diet, from the daily diet, remove the bad things, the bad agents, like the seed oils are bad, nothing, refined sugars are not good. I didn't put here, like we have sugars made from plant, like stevia, these are very good, but any other sugars, it's not good. Corn, there are issues with corn because unless it's uh, genetic, um, sorry, it's organic, uh, usually the corn will be genetically modified or also sprayed with all kinds of chemicals and eventually it's hard for the body to digest and it translates into sugars. Now, fried food, it's also, it's also bad for us. We should not eat fried food. Now, the last, I don't know, 30, 50 years, when we introduced the takeout um, to our industry, so what happened with um, omega-6? Omega-6 went to the roof before we had omega-3 and omega-6 in a balance. And I will talk about omega-6. It's needed, but too much, it causes uh, inflammation. So you want to avoid at least these foods, okay? We should eat a lot of veggies, 
And meat, if you eat meat, should be organic. And if you eat fish, should be wild caught. You don't want from the farm because they, they will feed him with corn and antibiotics and who knows what. So you don't want that. Now, as far as cayenne pepper, it's proven cayenne pepper will help the circulation if you can, if you can eat uh, spicy and you should try how much is too much. But cayenne pepper is one of the condiments that will help you to get the circulation in check. White tea, we have the white and the green. The white tea is the baby of the green tea. A lot of antioxidants. We need on antioxidants. Remember, antioxidant is the vitamin C. And I will tell you why we need that in a moment. Okay, uh, prom uh, pomegranate and avocado. Pomegranate for how this is, is maybe one of the best or the first you know, a fruit to go to, to avoid um, a high blood pressure. Now, avocado, it's the good fat. We need a good fat. You see here, we have the good oils, like almonds, like cashews, all these, they have a lot of omega-3, and these are good fat that we need for our, um, our body. Now, let's move on to uh, omega-3. And I, you know, I put EPA here. I didn't put omega-3 because omega-3 has... Uh, two components when you go to the store. It, it has the DHA and then EPA. And some the, the products will have higher EPA and lower DHA or other products the other way around. Both are very good. The thing is there are times we need one and there are other times we need the other one. We, when we are talking about more physical treatment or prevention, we want the EPA, um, higher EPA. Now, Omega-3 um, research started like in the 18, 1986 was, I think, the first big um, Eureka uh, research that um, was led by um, um, uh, U.S. Uh, researchers. And today they, they say there's no toxicity with having uh, Omega-3 and, and you can take up to, certain depends on the conditions, but up to 4,000 milligrams of a combination of EPA and DHA a day. Now, omega-6, as I said, remember the omega-6, we need omega-6 because the, the body will take that omega-6 and, and it will create omega-3, okay? And from the omega-3, the liver also makes the EPA. Now, this is all good when we are healthy, when there is no problem, so, and the body works efficiently, but if something it's not that well, so the omega-6, it's not going to be translated too well to omega-3, and there's no much of EPA out of that. That's why we need these supplements and every day, okay? Um, from EPA, the body will do DHA. <clears throat> we don't have the, the, the DHA, we don't have circulating in the, in the body on its own. We have it in the brain and in the retina. The DHA is needed for motoric functions and for brain functions because it lubricates the neurons, it lubricates the nerves. Imagine if I have, I mean, my neurons, and if it's not lubricated, with time I'm going to get purse, okay, holes. It's going to, the, there is a, a, a sheet um, skin on the nerve that is going to be damaged, and that will cause dementia. That's for a different topic. A different time, but that, that's why um, all ages, all the time, omega-3, it's very important to consume. Now, uh, um, the APA, okay, it, it, it prevents clots, uh, it, it improves the circulation, it lowers triglycerides, and we will talk about the statins. Statins, it's a pharmaceutical drug that it's very common use for um, for blood, uh, high blood pressure. Now, <clears throat> remember I was talking about vitamin C. Now, what happens with vitamin C? Why it's so important? <clears throat> what happens with, um, with the cholesterol is that, as I said before, we want the cholesterol to, to do the job and the remain, we need to bring it back and there is a lipoprotein. The lipoprotein is a kind of fancy word. It's the vacuum cleaner, okay, for, um, for the body to take that cholesterol and bring it to, uh, to the liver. But when we, we are a bit sick, 
um, when we smoke, well, I mean, a lot of issues can be there that there is a lot of um, free radicals going around and they will damage this vacuum cleaner. And when that gets damaged, so we cannot bring this cholesterol back to, to be disposed. That's why it's important that we have the omega, uh, sorry, the, the vitamin C in check. That's why we need to take every day vitamin C. Um, okay, so it's very, very simple. Um, now, for, for later, when you have a chance, if you want, um, you can read in my blog, uh, basically, I put a, a, a deep explanation about omega-3 and omega-6 and why is this important plus some tips uh, for homeopathy. Now, <clears throat> vitamin D, okay, it's a hormone that we need, especially here in Canada, and now we start the winter and there's not much sun, so we need that. Because remember all the time, immune system, we want to be in check. You want to be healthy in general and vitamin C in check. So vitamin D will help the immune system to be good. So all these Cholesterol will do the job needs to do, and the triglycerides and whatever that doesn't need to be in the body, it will get disposed. So it prevents diabetes um, and it controls the blood pressure. Of course, other topics for later on that will be uh, brain activities and, and uh, skin health. Um, MCT oil, it's a derivative of the coconut. coconut. Now, many people, if you um, experimented with ketogenic diet, so probably you heard or you used MCT oil. It's, uh, it doesn't have any, any taste or any smell or any color. It's, um, you can put it in your coffee like I used to do. I make coffees very tasty with MCT oil. Or you can cook with it. You can put this in your hair, in your face, you know, just to moisturize the skin. But the, the idea is, okay, it, it's, for our case, it helps to get antibacterial and antiviral, uh, which I want to make a five seconds statement about that. Homeopathy, because people ask me about that, homeopathy do not kill um, bacteria and we don't kill viruses. Homeopathy is about giving, as Karina was explaining, giving a remedy for the body to act to do something. Whether it's going to be killing the bacteria or not, we don't know, but it's the, the remedy itself, it's not purpose to go and, um, and treat directly a bacteria or, or a virus. But the MCT oil, it's important because we need anti-inflammatory agents that basically will be natural. Okay, now <clears throat> a few more tips here. What we can do, right? We can, we can every day, we can do something to help ourselves. We are talking about night sleep, very good night sleep. You, you, you heard Karina talking about sleep in her cases. For homeopathy, sleeping is something important. I ask people I, I take care of, I said, okay, how is your sleep? When they tell me sleep is good means Okay, they, 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 it's a good sign, okay, that because the body goes to the garage to repair itself during sleep. When they say, no, I don't sleep because of this and because of that, means I need to treat that, okay? Um, exercising, walking, whatever you exercise, it's good, relaxation, we, we have to be in check with our full, full food, sorry, and then we also have to do um, some relaxation, some meditation, we deserve this for ourselves. We can have every day, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever you think you need to take. Just go aside, anywhere, any chair, or on the floor, or on the bed. It doesn't matter. Whatever you feel comfortable, do something This is for you. It doesn't matter if you have your eyes closed or eyes open. It doesn't matter what kind of music, one or the other. But you should have this moment that you relax. Especially, and this is from Ayurvedic medicine, especially before going for a meal. You want to come to the table when you are happy, you want to come to the table when you are relaxed, you don't want to eat in a rush, you don't want to eat under stress because your body is acting in stress situations. We have in the gut the 
hy the hydrochloric acid that will help digest the food. If we don't create enough of the hydrochloric acid, so you cannot digest the food properly. You're, you may have constipation or you may have acidity if you have too much, okay? So you want to come and during the, the meals, during table, you, you, you want to put maybe nice music, you want to have a nice peaceful conversation. There are many things that if we get used to those, doing those things on every day, you are going to be more healthy. Garlic, I don't want to forget, and, and not only garlic, but it's almost similar to ginger. I didn't put it here because it's very similar. Ginger, garlic, these are, these are natural antibiotics, okay? I cannot emphasize more how important is garlic, okay, to help us to regulate sugar, cholesterol, okay, and everything that's related to the heart, okay? Everything that's related to the heart, it's garlic. It's one of them. There are many, but you put this in the food, you can take it as a, as a pill if you go and take it as a supplement. You want to have garlic in your daily uh, routines. Now, as I said, I want to talk about kidneys for a second, because is it the chicken or the egg? And don't know, uh, to be honest, but when we have high blood pressure, the kidneys have a mechanism to protect itself. It's like, you know, its own brain, okay? And what happens to the kidney, they detect uh, high blood pressure, they will shrink the vessels in order to protect the, the tiny vessels, not to get damaged because of the high blood pressure, okay? So what happens is if continuously or very high blood pressure for, for so long and so long, what is going, going to happen may be a rupture in the tiny vessels in the kidneys and then we have kidney diseases or we have the repelling mechanism that will go and fix the tiny vessels and that repelling mechanism as good as it needs to be it will create the plaques and when we create plaques again we start in having blockage and the circulation is not good so the blood is getting pumping and is getting uh, very hard work, okay, just to say that. All right, now statins. I wanted to talk about statins because the statins are in a healthy situation. Um, it's used wherever needs to be used, reduces um, the, the cholesterol and the triglycerides also, but um, it, it needs to be removed by the liver. The, today, doctors and you can ask your doctor if you need that if he, if he gives you that you can see what is his opinion because we know today that statin can go to other organs organs in the body and can cause uh, muscle pain okay and it can stay in other tissues as well we know that it might create um, diabetes or increase the blood sugar so we can we can do many things if you're taking statins okay you can in parallel take homeopathic remedies and eventually with the help of the, the doctor working together with the doctor and working together with the homeopath you can try getting rid of the statins and continue working on lifestyle and nutrition and homeopathic remedy so this is for me i just want to finish saying thank you to karina I mean, she's done an amazing job with this platform and basically it's a, it's a hard work and uh, thanks to her, uh, you can come for free, um, ask questions, post other topics that you would like us to talk about or find other practitioners and thank to this platform. What we would like from you is basically share this information to your family, to your friends, so they can join as well.